Okay, so I've recorded some MIDI information in. I've fiddled around with it a little bit and it now sounds like this. Bit groovy. Okay, so yes, this is uh, so I've, I've done a few octave changes and uh, a few other things which I thought were quite important to just make it sound a little bit nicer. Uh, but the big change I want to do now to show you is how we can record drums because at the moment we're just using a single trigger loop so at the moment like I said the people at, at Avid have programmed this for you and it's very nice don't get me wrong and it's a perfectly good way of working these days but if we want to record our own drums then we've got a couple of ways that we go about it and this is where this MIDI merge function comes into control and you'll notice it also as well I've turned on loop on the play button okay so to do that, just right click on the play button and select loop or we go to the options menu and we select loop playback or you can play shift command and L and you get the loop function turned on. Uh, so at the moment, for example, if I just clicked on that, it will just carry on looping around those four bars. So at the moment, no drums. We're going to put some drums on ourselves. OK, so I'll start off using the expand instrument itself. OK, so now this time rather than going to loops, I'm going to go down to drums. Now, unlike most sample players, there aren't complete kits here. You can make up a kit. Um, so, for example, go to kicks menu. And that means now, oops, I can't find any of my kicks. Am I in the wrong octave? I think it might be in the, the uh, oh, because I haven't selected record. We always make these mistakes, don't we? Oh, there we go. Okay, eventually he found them. There's all my kicks. Um, but obviously I can't make a drum uh, pattern out of that. So that's not the best in the world. But that shows you all the different samples that are available in there. What I'm going to do though is instead of kicks menu, uh, I'm going to select kick selector. Like that. It's actually only just maybe that one kick drum. We'll just use that. It's not the best sound in the world. And then in the second instrument, the B group, what I'm going to do is do the same selection, but this time go to drums and select snares selector. So now, so on the C, I've got the kick drum, and on the D, just above the C, I've got my snare drum. I have nothing else apart from a variation of that snare drum. Okay, so in the third instrument here in C, what I'm going to do is once again go to drums, and I'm going to go to... Uh, hats and toms and sims selector okay so now my f sharp i've got a closed hi hat b flat i've got an open g sharp i've got a, a foot closed hi hat okay i've got tom toms and some symbols including a crash symbol so this time what i'm doing is i'm actually going to program the drums myself so to do that, I'm going to keep the loop mode on. I'm going to keep MIDI merge on. Okay, with MIDI merge on, that means it'll play the first four bars, then go back to the beginning, and then I can put stuff over the top of it. What I'll do is I'll show you first what happens if I don't put MIDI merge on. So in the first pass, I'm going to play some kick and snare. Then the second pass, I'll try and put some hi hats on top of that. But without MIDI merge on, watch what happens. So two bar counting again. One, two, three. So you see, it's a raising over it because I'm not merging. So I can put the hi hat on now. But the next time it comes to pass, it'll raise over the hi hat. Not the most ideal function. And remember. Now, that MIDI merge is not on by default, you have to turn it on, and that's me turned on MIDI merge now. So let's watch MIDI merge in action. We'll do a four bar drum pattern. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we're going back, and this time it's not erasing. So what I'll do now is I'll put some hi-hats on top of my kick and snare. There 
There we go. So that's a four bar drum pattern and it's really important that I quantize that. So again, I'll just zoom in to let you see how uh, out of time that's potentially played. It sounds in time, but at the moment it is unquantized. So I'm going to quantize that, option a zero. There's my quantize grid. I'm going to quantize it to semiquavers. We quantize to the shortest note value I used. And the shortest note value I used was in the hi-hats and it was a sixteenth of a bar, which means a semiquaver. So click on apply and now have a listen. Not bad at all. Now we feel that any of the velocities could change in that. We can just go into the uh, editor. That first snare is a little bit quiet, for example. So, oops, hang on a second. I did it again, didn't I? I had everything selected. And there's a hi hat. So there's the snare there. Just bring it up. Okay. There we go. So I can customize my drum parts now. Now, those sounds are good, they're nice, and they work with this song, and they'll probably work with most songs, but let's say we want something a little bit more dancey, maybe a little bit more electronic, okay? The other instrument that we have in here that we can utilize is an instrument called Boom, okay? Now, something's gonna happen here um, that might have happened when you were assigning an instrument. The very first time that Pro Tools tries to assign an instrument, sometimes it has to go and look for a sound bank. And you just have to tell it where the sound bank is. So it comes up and it looks like this. And it's got this thing, factory content was not found. Please locate the content file. Now, interesting, when you click and browse, it goes to exactly where it is. Having said that, on this, my computer, I've actually put all my sounds in a slightly different place. So they're in this folder here. So all I'm doing is directing the instrument boom to the folder where the sounds are. And we're looking for this file called boom.big. If you look at the mini grand, it's called mini grand.big. Expand, it's called expand.big vacuum. Actually, you don't have anything in vacuum because it's a true synthesizer. So that's quite useful. Click on choose. And then we have our drum machine. So this is a, it's a, a another Avid Air Instruments drum machine. So if I hit play here, nothing happens. Okay, I'm not entirely sure why nothing's happening, but let's try it. Okay, I'm trying to trigger those sounds. And it's not triggering and it's not playing. It says it is, but it isn't. And the volume is turned up. We don't have a drum kit assigned. Well, that would always be a good idea, wouldn't it? There we go. <laughs> Even the best of us make mistakes. Okay, so there's my urban drum kit. Um, I'll just play them now. So these are rhythms that are pre-programmed and you can trigger these in exactly the same way using a single note. I'm going to find the note to trigger it. Oh, I don't have record enabled. Yes, once again. So I'm holding down C there. That plays a pattern. Then I go up one note to D and it plays a different pattern. So it's a little bit more sophisticated than the expand one. So different patterns. You can reprogram these patterns as well. So you've got a, a certain amount of uh, user controllability over those things, which is quite good, quite good. And you can also change the drums. So let's change it to an 808 emulator. So again, if I solo up the drums here, you can hear the instrument is changed. And that's an 808 uh, drum machine samples. Let's go for a 909. Okay, let's go for a dance one. Now the reason this is happening is because the kick drum and the snare drum are assigned, to, and the hi-hats are assigned to the same notes as they are on expand. So again, that's really useful. That means we can chop and change instruments until we get one that we like the sound out or sound of. So So we're totally changing the character of the song just by changing the instrument. There we go. Nice cheesy wee Casio VL tone kind of thing going on there. So it's up to you what you can do. It, it, it opens a wealth of new ideas for arrangement and for all sorts of things. It's really important that you quantize the drums and it's very important that you quantize the bass so they work tightly together. All the other instruments don't necessarily need quantized. Make a 
decent decision about which ones you actually want to use for that. Um, but bass and kit need to be good and tight. But all the other instruments could potentially be unquantized. Okay, so that's that for uh, a wee bit of drum programming there. I mean, we could do an entire two-hour video on how to actually do drum programming and make it sound nice and realistic. But that's a, a pretty reasonable introduction to it.